Hi, Steve here, blessedhopeforever.com. I want to talk about three dates here in, in this year, 2024. I want to talk about May 14, June 6, and November 29. When it comes to May 14, according to the creation calendar, May 14 is Pentecost. You may recognize that date because that's the date that Israel was born again. This will mark Israel's 76th birthday. Uh, the Jews celebrate Pentecost as the, the date in which Moses received the Torah on Mount Sinai. And it is a Tuesday. So what if the rapture occurred on the day that the very the very day that the church began? I find the the whole topic very intriguing. Uh, this day happens to be a Tuesday. Uh, I want to quote something from uh, Chabad.org. It's a Jewish website. It says twice in Genesis about the third day of creating the world and God. God saw that it was good, uh, Genesis 1, 10 and 12, which has led many to believe it is twice as nice to get married on the third day of the week, which is Tuesday. So May 14, Pentecost. I'm sure if you Googled uh, the date of the Pentecost, date of Pentecost this year, it'd be different than the creation calendar, but it's May 14. It's the date that, that Israel uh, celebrates its new birth. It's the Independence Day. Uh, it's the it's 76th birthday. It's the date in which Moses received the law on Mount Sinai, and it's a Tuesday. So that's one of the dates I wanted to talk about. The next one is June the 6th of this year. On that same creation calendar, we can see that June 6, 3977 B.C. Is the, is the beginning point. That's when God said, let there be light. That's creation day one, June 6. Now, if we looked at June 6 this year, it falls on Jerusalem Day, according to the creation calendar. Now, despite the fact that that, that date, June 6, reminds us of D-Day, Normandy uh, invasion, World War II, uh, I don't really have anything to say about that, but I will point out that the creation calendar lists 3977 BC as that beginning point. If we go from 3977 BC to this year, 2024, it marks 6,000 years. 6,000 years. I have nothing to do with that calendar. Uh, I do believe that as the years go by, they update that so that someday they're going to get it right. But that's how they're, they're, they're showing that today. So there's May 14. I think there's a lot of reason to have hope as far as those looking for the rapture on May 14, as well as June 6. And now I want to talk about November 29, and I know I've jumped over Feast of Trumpets and Day of Atonement and Tabernacles and so on and so forth, but uh, I want to talk about November 29 because this is something that I've been looking into for about a year now. I don't know what, I, I wouldn't really know what to call that this timeline except I see somewhat of a, some path. I see a pattern here and I see a lot of connections between uh, the triumphant entry 
of Christ, of Jesus, uh, when He entered the temple. Uh, tabernacles, uh, the temple itself, and Hanukkah. I see uh, some remarkable uh, connections here between this. So I guess you could call it the triumphant entry, tabernacles, temple, Hanukkah conundrum. I, you know, I, uh, anyway, beginning uh, here with this and, and how that I can ex best, I think, explain this, John uh, chapter 7 through 9, we see that the Feast of Tabernacles is a forward-looking feast with a yet future fulfillment. The prophet Zechariah had foretold of a day when all the nations of the world would celebrate the fulfillment of this feast uh, that probably has to do with the kingdom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest the kingdom when Christ returns. God entered the temple at the Feast of Tabernacles in the seventh month. That's the month that we typically recognize as September. The feast came after the dedication of the temple, which took place on the 15th day of the month. And I'm going to say possibly in 31 AD. 31 AD, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there's, it's typically recognized among most Bible students, most prophecy students, uh, those interested in, uh, in the date of the crucifixion, that it, it occurred between a period of, of AD 30 and AD 36. I am going to suggest that it occurred in 31. Uh, many at this point are taking a hard look at 32. Uh, there's still those that are clinging to 30. And of course, some have gone as far as saying, suggesting perhaps 34. You won't find too many people that say 35 or 36. I'm going to say 31. I'm just I'm basing this on 31. Regardless of the outcome of all this, it, if even if the 31 that I'm suggesting is not correct, it still should show you that we are in a very uh, crucial. We are living through a very crucial period in human history. I've always believed that Jesus was born on 3 BC, September 11th, in fact. I've done videos on this. So from 3 BC to 31, he would have been 33. Uh, the year zero is not counted. Tabernacles, day one, in 31 AD, was September 21. Uh, the following day being September 22, which uh, this ministry recognized as the most accurate date of the Revelation 12 sign, which occurred in 2017. September 22 and 23 of 2017. So 2017 to 2024 marked seven years. If you subtract 31 from 2024, you get 1993. And then when you add the seven-year tribulation period, then Christ returns, and that would mark 2,000 years. So I want to talk a little about, a bit about the temple. I'm wondering if it may have all of this may have began with the temple. And I mean everything. That our our history has been a little more than defiling and rededicating that temple. And therefore it's it may end very well end with the removal of the temple that is the church today, which is then followed seven years later by the return of, well, let's just say it, the temple. So I'm going to ask you folks, why would not a timeline deal with the temple? We've, we've talked about, you know, 
Pentecost and trumpets and, and atonement and, and so on and so forth, but why would a timeline not possibly deal with the matters surrounding the temple? Psalms 27, 4. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I desire, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. 1 Corinthians 3, 17. If any man defile the temple of God, keep in mind, we've got an antichrist at the midpoint that defiles the temple. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. We are the, the only temple at the present time, the body of Christ. The temple is a treasured place, Ezekiel 7.22. We worship the temple, which is Christ. His body is the temple. Mark 14, 58 makes it clear that His body is the temple. I am of the mind that the temple was as dear to God as the wife is to the husband. And dearly beloved, the bride is about to meet the groom. We're looking for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ for His church, then to deliver Israel, and Christ is the temple. We see that it begins and it ends really, if you really wanted to be honest about it, it begins and ends with the temple. As far as uh, Jewish marriage is concerned, uh, Kislev, which is the month of Hanukkah. Now I'm looking at month nine on the Hebrew calendar. The entire month of Kislev is, is extremely auspicious as, as uh, evidenced by the holiday of Hanukkah, which falls during the last days of that month, uh, the holiday of light. Uh, the Jewish people think, believe that this is a wonderful time to begin a marriage of light and happiness. Let's look, talk a bit about the history of Hanukkah. Well, I've, I've made videos on this, but just to refresh your memory, it commemorates the Maccabean victories over the forces of the Seleucid king Antiochus IV, Epiphanes, who reigned... Uh, up in 175 to 164 BC, and the rededication, the rededication of the temple uh, on Kislev, uh, within the month of Kislev, in 164 BC. Judas Maccabeus, uh, he, Maccabeus, he, he purifies the, the defiled temple in Jerusalem, destroys the idols erected there by Antiochus, uh, and he restores the surface in the uh, the service in the temple. The the reconsecration of the temple becomes an annual feast of dedication uh, in the Jewish calendar, Hanukkah. Uh, there may be a tribulation period midpoint hint going on here. We know that the temple is defiled at the midpoint by the Antichrist. He desecrates it. It will need cleansing. Enter our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, at His second coming. Kislev, 164 BC, the temple's defiled. The temple is cleansed and rededicated. Hanukkah this year, November 29. This is where it gets interesting for me because Hanukkah this year, November 29, very recognizable date. To, for many of you, November 29, in history, the United Nations partition, UN partition of Palestine. If we, if we look at the math here, uh, November 29, 1947, which is when this occurred, 
to November 29 this year, 77 years exact. Exact. So assuming, assuming that there was a November 29, 2024 Hanukkah rapture of the church, a day that I think that many would not, would least expect, the temple, the temple, the church is removed and consecrated to God, rededicated to God. Why? Why? Why, why that connection? Could it be perhaps because the, the temple today, I'm not talking about the tribulation period, I'm not talking about 164 BC, today, perhaps it's because the temple continues to be defiled. The church is the true temple. So let's begin at that date. Let's go forward 1,290 days, not 1,260. I watch my past videos on these numbers. 1,290 days to a midpoint of the tribulation. A midpoint. It lands on June 10, 2028. This is when the temple would be defiled by the Antichrist. June 10 is the day, according to the creation calendar, that Adam was created. June 10, 3977 B.C. That's where it lands. On the exact day Adam was created. Why the midpoint on Adam's creation day? Creation day 6. Well, why not? Satan attempted to... No, no, what am I saying? Satan did. He tempted Adam and he corrupted the, in, the entire human race. And today the church is comprised of members of that one body, that one temple, that one temple being... Christ. We are members, all members of that one body, the temple, which is Christ. We're not a bunch of little temples running around, okay? All right. Where you have to clean up the old man, make the old man, the flesh, acceptable to God. So we know the Antichrist reigns 42 months or 1260 days. So we, we go through that great tribulation period. Forward 1260 days to, where does it take us? November the 22nd, 2031. 2031. 2031. I, I say that again because it, you know, I suggested early on that I thought maybe this all started, the crucifixion, the beginning of the church started in 31. So that's where it takes us, 2031. 2,000 years. Now, aside from the fact that, that uh, November 22 is also a recognizable date in history, a date that will kind of live in infamy, the JFK assassination, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I'm going to skip over that and just continue to suggest here that perhaps the crucifixion occurred around 31 AD. So calculating from that, Jesus, who was born in 3 BC, who dies at age 33, well, 31 AD to 2031 is 2,000 years. And, you know, the cross in the beginning of... Calvary, the crucifixion, the church, uh, be the beginning of the church to the return of Christ, 2,000 years. Now we still have to go to the kingdom. 
And I've pointed out in numerous videos that what I, how I believe the 1335 days is, is marking a, a period of time from the midpoint until the, to the kingdom. 1335 days, which is 75 days more than the Great Tribulation, which, is, which to me explains why Jesus returns and makes war with His enemies before the kingdom age begins. So just to summarize, you know, Adam's created by uh, this one temple, Christ. Adam sins. The human race is corrupted. Uh, the, the temple, the dwelling place of God is defiled or desecrated. Jump ahead to 164 B.C. Again, the temple is, is defiled. Uh, the temple is, clean, is cleansed. It's rededicated. Uh, jump ahead to 31 A.D., the true temple uh, crucified in the church age begins. Uh, and then to the present day, or that the church, the temple, I'm going to suggest, it's not hard for me to suggest that the temple today is defiled. I believe it's departed from the faith. It's corrupt. So the, assuming the rapture is, you know, the, the temple is raptured in 2024. The temple is then cleansed, rededicated, or consecrated to God. So now we've got the tribulation period where the temple is defiled by the Antichrist. But then the temple, that is Christ, He returns at the second coming. The kingdom is established. So 6,000 years ends and the thousand year kingdom begins. If you count from creation day one to the kingdom, it would be 6,007 years. 6,007 years. That's it. That's, that's what I wanted to pass along to you at this uh, point in time here on uh, April 24, 2024. Join us on Sunday as we study through the wonderful book of Philemon. I love you all. I truly do. Keep looking up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Until then, thanks for watching.